Welcome back to another Megiddo Gaming video. Uh, I'm doing an update. Um, well, to be honest, this is about what the best build is for the Trickster Rogue. And good news and bad news is the best build is actually a build that can't be used. I'd gone over it once before about going through the Scoundrel Path and how since these dazes don't work on mid to high level bosses it makes it useless for pve and with the changes in 12b um, it's not as good even in pvp so unfortunately the best build can't be used um, saboteur path there are a lot of successful trickster rogues out there and i've talked to some of them that use this build and do very well with it. Uh, unfortunately though, with uh, areas like FBI and um, you know, so something that's very boss heavy with single point, uh, Saboteur doesn't shine that well. Saboteur will mostly do well in areas where there's a lot of mobs. Uh, you're getting your encounters off rather quickly, so a lot of your AoE damage to take out mobs, but of course that's not as effective uh, single point. <clears throat> so even in PvP and a lot of PvE, you'll see people doing Executioner Path. And now with uh, how Shadowborn's been working, uh, which is supposed to be fixed in Mod 13, a lot of people have been using uh, Dying Breath. Uh, so Dying Breath does need to help you when there's mobs around, but if you're fighting, say, the Dragon Turtle in FBI or the final boss, it's not going to do you any good. There's no ads uh, for that to trigger. And to be honest, if your critical severity is already extremely high, you're running, uh, I think it's perfect Vorpal or higher, it's not going to make that much of a difference at extra 25% severity anyways. So there's been a lot of arguments that I've seen in forums and chats and things like that about people stealing each other's builds. Well, to be honest, no one's stealing anyone's builds. There really is only one path and that's Executioner. And to be honest, if you are end game, there are only certain feats that are actually going to benefit you uh, when creating that. And it's the same way a lot of people end up going Scoundrel Executioner just for back alley tactics. And of course, on the way there, you can use Press the Advantage so you're impossible to catch, you know, can help you out a bit. So there really is currently only one path. Now there's different things you can do with that. Uh, so, and I've been testing this the last two days. Uh, I've been running till like my f thumbs have turned black. Uh, and I've been testing things like your ability scores. So if you notice, a lot of people have higher decks than I do. This because I just got done testing uh, running uh, strength and charisma versus strength and decks. So. I had to do a race reroll, which is 1500 Zen. That's no fun. Uh, but I tested it with going with the best roll for tech, uh, for dex and strength, and then the best roll for uh, strength and charisma. So charisma, in all honesty, with strength should be your best choice. Uh, you still get the deflection chance like dexterity does. Uh, you lose the AoE damage resist, uh, but you gain uh, combat advantage and companion stat bonus. Now companion stat bonus would probably make this better than dex hands down if it worked off of you know the stats that your companion has calculated after the enchantments and gear are on them but it is only on their base stats so that's like minuscule amount of points. Uh, the combat advantage damage now, combat advantage damage is not a flat, well, it is an increase to your damage, but it doesn't, like, if it says you have 25% combat advantage damage, that doesn't mean that you have 
25% more damage. It actually works very similar to how uh, critical severity works. It actually kind of works together. So when you're doing it comparatively, uh, as far as damage output, dexterity is really only giving you a chance of hitting harder. Now, of course, if your critical chance is 100%, of course, 100% of your attacks are going to hit harder. But if you utilized charisma and the combat advantage damage, you would actually be able to open up more windows, so to speak. So the way combat, ad combat advantage damage works with critical severity, you would actually be able to forego having a Vorpal and use a different weapon enchantment. Because your severity from your boons and feats could stack with your combat advantage that you have in your regular stats and your charisma, as well as some of the uh, boon choices to kind of offset it a bit. So in essence, as long as you could give yourself critical chance through gear and enchantments, dexterity is kind of useless, whereas charisma can help increase the amount of damage that you can do. Now the only problem with this is, and I mean it's a basic tutorial, but I mean if there is someone between my companion and I, and that's one of the problems I'll go into next, you'll have combat advantage. And, and this works, you know, with NPCs or, uh, or any of your group members to help give you combat advantage. Now if you're doing stuff solo, you have a problem. This guy, even if we were in a combat situation, does not like to stand still. Now, I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to get hit either. But that limits what we can do. And, and what I mean by that is if you go into your powers, you'll see a lot of people will actually run infiltrator's action. When you use your daily power, you gain combat advantage for so many seconds. The reason why they do this is so that way on all mobs, no matter where your orientation is to your teammates or your companion, you're going to have combat advantage. So to show you real quick, I'm going to go over here to the dummies. Oh, and you may have noticed I switched from Dragonborn to Human. Uh, apparently there was a bug where uh, unless you started as a Dragonborn, uh, you don't get all of the racial bonuses. So. Uh, until they have that fixed, which I think they're fixing that in mod 13. I'm running human for the extra feet points. So, can't get much more cookie cutter than that. So, as you can see, companion was on the other side of the enemy and then walked to my side. So, now I don't have combat advantage. So, now i got to walk over here. Now, if there was other mobs involved that were gathering his attention or they were drawing aggro or he was drawing their aggro, he may get pushed out of this tiny little bubble which, you know, you only got so much of a window. And if the enemy turns to face him, then the, the, the little purple thing on the ground there will uh, move, and then you lose your combat advantage. So the way that a lot of tricksters compensate for this is that when you, active, uh, when you have that power, I'll go back to it, infiltrator's action, when you use a daily power, so see now, no matter which way you go, that purple ring is on there. So as long as you're keeping your dailies up, you will always have that ring up there. And you don't have to worry about it. Now, it only lasts for so many seconds. And I have witnessed on occasion where it seems like control, control strength can affect that. However, control strength doesn't affect everything that can give you that combat of damage. So it's almost not worth putting anything into it. Now, there is a chance that when you use Dazing Strike like that, that you can get this for a few seconds. Now, I've also noticed that that's inconsistent. It seems like the mobs are able to shake that off uh, due to any control resistances they may have. So you can't be dependent on that. Now, like I said, I ran this several times over and over soloing a dungeon to test it out. And what I found is that I can actually do as much or more damage with charisma and strength if I can say have a perfect run where I'm always hitting this section.
as you can see, someone else has showed up next to me, which increases this window because I've got one on this side, one on this side. But then someone moves and I lose it. It's inconsistent. So that's why people go with having it very consistent. Now that takes one of our options away. So when you take away from decks, you take away from your critical chance. So if you go down and look here. Dexterity increases your critical chance. So this is a percent. Anything above 10 is an extra percent to your critical chance. So we've got an extra 16% it shows from dexterity. Now if we switch that over into charisma, we'll lose that. It won't go all the way down, but here I'll change my loadout real quick to show you. I'll change it to the one that I was working on. So as you can see, I put all the ability points into Charisma and into Strength to get that damage bonus, which of course is going to take us down by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 percent off of our crit chance. So if we go back down to Critical Strike, oh, we'll go down to it shows we're only getting 11%. So now we have to compensate for that loss in stats, which means we're going to have to add more into our enchants, which takes away from being able to add more power to our build, which in theory should be able to be compensated for by this change, which we can do. But it goes down to making sure we have constant combat advantage, which means we have to have infiltrators action unless you have one amazing internet connection and there is no lag and anyone who's played this game long enough knows that you can have a really fast connection your router port forwarded wired not wireless a solo dungeon and still have lag how that happens I have no clue so that means if you want to have the best chance of having that combat advantage damage you have to have infiltrators action which really limits the build choices. Otherwise, I'd use Skillful Infiltrator because you're going to gain back some of that lost critical chance and add deflection and run speed to that. And that's what I was using when I was doing my testing. So I was actually able to, on average, run Kessel's Retreat solo about seven minute runs. And I was able to do that with either Infiltrators or Skillful, but more often with this because I'd run into lag or, you know, my companion would decide to run off and I'd lose my combat advantage damage. So that's why you'll see everybody running infiltrators. Now, if you look at some of the other choices in here, oppressive darkness would be really nice, especially in Cholt, with the amount of increase in um, damage resistance that the creatures have. But if you do oppressive darkness, it actually doesn't work with all of our powers. It doesn't proc off things like Path of Blades. It doesn't proc off Smoke Bomb. It, I mean, really, it would only work off of like Lashing Blade or Dazing Strike. And I'll show you over here if I can. So let's go to our log here. Okay, so you see our oppressive darkness deals 674 damage. whoop de freaking do Now, if that worked on Smoke Bomb, that'd be a different situation. And it's got something else against it. It only works if you have, um, uh, sorry, it only works if you have combat advantage. So another thing against it. Now if this actually treated every attack and gave an increase in piercing damage per attack, then that'd be fine, you know, give me an extra 400 points in uh, damage, but make sure the rest of my damage is actually ignoring all armor. Um, if we go into our other powers, Tenacious Concealment's actually getting a fix, um, which will help reduce stealth loss, but you know, we still run into the thing is that if you stealth encounter, it's gone. So being able to take a few hits, I mean, yeah, you're Duelist Flurry is going to be able to get off a few more hits without your stealth expiring, but it's still, it, like, huh, 
Here, I'll show you on the dummy. You can't get through all swings of Duelist Flurry in this, even if you were to go into your feats and put in um, Improved Cunning Sneak. That 20% longer does not equate to being able to do like halfway through Duelist Flurry, it disappears. So really what I'm just trying to show is that there's a lot of potential in the different paths and powers that you choose, but based off things not working, whether it be due to lag, not doing as the tooltip said, or anything like that, we are very limited and therefore, you know, the claims that people are stealing builds is not true. If you are looking for max damage, you're going to run Executioner Path. Whisper Knife is a joke, unfortunately. It looks like it'd be a lot of fun, and a lot of people still play it and have fun with it. But if you're wanting to go for max damage, none of these other paths are going to work. Saboteur comes close. Excuse me. <clears throat> Saboteur can come Saboteur can come close, but is mostly for um, heavy mobs. And you can of course switch between Saboteur and Executioner depending on where you're at in a dungeon, if you know there's gonna be a lot of mobs or not. But the most amount of damage that you're gonna get is through Executioner. And the powers, I've tested every power in here. There are some really cool powers in here. Bait and switch would be nice, but it doesn't draw the aggro right. Doesn't gain you near enough action points to make it viable. And of course, doesn't draw the attention of bosses. I tried soloing Temple of the Spider. She'd come after me every time. Wouldn't go for the decoy at all. Uh, first strike, well, you know, a lot, of, you know, you get some extra damage, but you could get more damage putting something else in. Death Strike would be nice, but it really only does half the damage of Dazing Strike. There's really limited on what you can have. Uh, Blood Bath's not bad if you're first starting out, but Blood Bath is not really good end game unless you're doing PvP, and mostly that's just because it's a cheap move. You'll probably see a lot of posts and videos about you know cheap PvP builds and how Trickster Roar trickster rogues are overpowered and a lot of them are using a it, I wouldn't say it's a glitch but it's a miscalculation on cryptic's part where if you uh, do smoke bomb and then courage breaker it pretty much locks someone down so you can just waylay and beat the hell out of someone before they can even do anything about it um, some of this stuff like talismans of shadows the days, I mean, if it if the days would increase by rank instead of radius, it, it would actually be worth something. Blade Flurry you'll see in a lot of Sabo builds. <clears throat> uh, Wicked Reminder's not bad if you need some extra help in a dungeon. But to give you an idea, pretty much everybody is running Dazing Strike because the amount of time that it takes is half cooldown compared to Lashing Blade, so you can actually deal more damage, and the option when going from stealth to deal AoE damage. Some people do Sly Flourish if they need to debuff, but most people run Duelist Flurry. And then Impossible to Catch, since that's in part of the path to get to our back alley tactics, you get, you know, extra 10% power increase, so people are using that and they're using Smoke Bomb. So Smoke Bomb, Dazing Strike, Impossible to Catch is standard, as well as Duelist Flurry. And then some people have both Sly Flourish and Duelist Flurry for their Atwills, uh, but a lot of people will run uh, Cloud of Steel, so if they have to roll away, they can still do some damage while they're you know, out of the red area. And then as far as dailies go, I mean, really it's the same thing. If you need a debuff, Courage Breakers, good, but pretty much everybody is going to be running Whirlwind and Blades for when there's mobs, about five or higher in groups of mobs, and then Lurker's Assault for single point. Bloodbath, if you're in a pug group and you're having trouble staying alive and you have to carry the team through, 
but it's usually just lurkers and whirlwind and then as far as boons go pretty much anything that deals damage a lot of people say if it's something it's like when taking damage I mean you shouldn't be taking damage if you have bark shield and it hits your bark it's not dealing you damage it doesn't work and of course a lot of these don't work on damage over time effects so even if it's like an extra 2,000 damage on a hit you know you're actually still gonna see some benefit for it because we hit so fast so anything that gives you power, anything that gives you crit, anything that gives you something of an edge to increase more damage is what you're going to pick for your boons. It's really self-explanatory. Um, like I said, control, control streak was, it would be fine if you're running scoundrel, but that's not a viable option. And like I said, I tested that with the dazing strike combat advantage days and as well as uh, the control that smoke bomb's supposed to give you. So don't go with anything control strength. I've tested that thoroughly. Um, combat advantage damage. Uh, you can stay at around 1200. Action point, same, stay around 1200. Recovery, you'll wanna be at about 10K. A critical strike depending on if you're trying the charisma or the dexterity build you're going to end up being anywhere from 26 to uh, 29k uh, crit so you want to be at about 90 percent crit chance it's hard for me to show you but uh, part of my gear actually revs up to over 90 as well as with some of my uh, boon choices Resistance ignored. You want to be at 85%. Once again, this revs up as well. It actually revs up to about 105%. Uh, some of the mobs like the T-Rexes and Cholt actually have a resistance up to about 115, I believe it is. Some of the bosses actually up to about 150. So, but just for basic mobs and uh, mid-level kind of bosses, you're going to be looking at 85%. This is going to be very important come mod 12b because uh, PC players are experiencing this, but us console players are going to have some reorganizing to do with the bonding nerf that's coming through. So you're still going to want to maintain about 90% crit chance, 85% minimum resistance ignored. And then your power should usually about be about 2 to 1 on your critical strike. So you should be looking at about 60 or higher, but you're going to take a hit in that power um, when that nerf comes through until you can get all your enchants to rank 14, which, as we've been able to see from a lot of people, that uh, it's going to take years. Unless something's coming out in mod 13, 13b, or 14, or whatever they're doing, to increase the seal drop. The drop rates are usually about one to two out of a hundred runs of Tomb of the Nine Gods. So unless you bust out your credit card, um, which there's, it's still a crapshoot to try and get those, you're going to be sitting at rank 13 for quite some time. Uh, but like I said, uh, power as high as you can get it after your crit chances at 90% armor penetration is at uh, 85% recovery you want to be in about the 10k range action point gain and combat advantage 1200 anything more than that is almost wasted but I have things in here that you know I could put into control but once again that's not going to do us any good unless they start making uh, scoundrel builds uh, actually have some kind of effect on bosses even if it's like a quarter of the time or something uh, defensive stats uh, if you're using like a lot of people do assassin's covenant you lose 10% of your defense deflection lifesteal and gain that as stats of power you will want to go all deflect and lifesteal. So rule of lifesteal is, is you want to be at about 20%, which is where I'm at. 
which if you're in a high-ranking guild, your lifesteal boon will take care of that in itself. Uh, after that, you want to stack deflect. So I would recommend, uh, if you do have your lifesteal boon, going with nothing but highest rank silveries. Defense, you're going to end up getting that just because some things have it. But that's just more fuel for your Assassin's Covenant, so don't worry about that. Don't worry about lifesteal severity, uh, just because, I mean, you're already going to get 100% as you hit. If you're hitting for, you know, 200k with a dazing strike, and your hit points are only at 113, you're fine. Uh, stamina gain, uh, if you do need to dodge, can't stay in the fight very long, so you don't have a bark shield or something, you kind of want that. Um, I mean, for me, even 10% seems like a bit much. Incoming healing, uh, I mean, you, you shouldn't need to be healed other than with your lifesteal, because you shouldn't be getting hit. Uh, bark shield is really just there for me, so if I do get hit hard enough that it has to break through the bark, has to break through my deflection, and then whatever is left over actually gets eaten up by my defense. I mean, I've been able to stand there and take hits from Orcus. So. AoE resist, I've tried stacking this thing up and it still doesn't seem to do anything. I've tested it out in the river district. Uh, with the fire on the ground and things and it doesn't really matter how high you stick that up there It's just gonna end up you're still gonna end up getting burned So don't worry about that control resist is nice um, In certain I, I mean especially if you look at tomb of the nine gods, but uh, Some of that stuff the resistance doesn't even work right like even with the uh, elven battle enchantment uh, You're still gonna end up getting controlled so I don't know, maybe stacking power so that way you're killing things faster, so they have less chance to control you because they're dead. <laughs> uh, movement speed. Uh, you can dodge roll your way through most places, and some places let you use your mount. I don't really worry about movement too much, unless you're soloing, I guess. Because if you're a smart TR, you're not running in first. <laughs> um... Not to say you can't, I've done it before if I know I'm going into a certain group that I can roll in, hit, and roll out, but once again, lag is not always on your side, and you don't want to let your team down because you get eaten by zombies in Castle Never of all places. Uh, you know, a place that's so easy to take on when you're high level, and, you know, lag, you know, kind of screws that up for you. So ju just let the uh, tank grab the aggro, and then you just beat the crap out of them. So yeah, as you can see, I'm at 83% when I'm not revved up. Uh, crit severity. Crit severity is... A lot of people say different things. I say it's usually about 150%. Crit severity is where you want to be. Unless you're stacking combat advantage damage. But you got to realize that... I don't know why it doesn't calculate with it, but... Um, my transcendent vorpal is giving me another 50% on top of that 87%. Ooh, I might be able to keep this at 30 minutes. Um, things like recharge speed and action point gain. I mean, at, you know, 10k recovery, you should be good there. And then really quick with mount abilities. Uh, kind of standard Artificer's Persuasion. You can, uh, I'm just going to kind of go through these real quick. Calvary's Warning, if you do have a legendary mount, which I do. And... Uh, Assassin's Covenant, we already went over that. Now, Protector's Camaraderie does not stack with itself, but it will stack with Protector's Friendship, and that will increase uh, the amount of power and defense that you get out of those. Those seem to be the best thing that I've seen stacking. Some people will try and do... Oh, where is it? Shepherd's Devotion. Um... Really, there hasn't been that much difference that I could tell between the two, and a lot of times, Protector's Camaraderie and Friendship actually do better. So I would recommend going that route. But, yeah, other than that, uh, you can Google 
the best rolls. I believe it's like 18, 18, 14, 13, I think. And see, that's another thing that we have against us when wanting to go the path of charisma, is that dexterity is our primary attribute, so you're automatically going to get more points in that when you do your rolls, uh, when you're creating your character, or if you do a race reroll. So right now, strength and dex. Um, so yeah, sorry to say it, there really is only one path if you want to do max damage. Until the update rolls out and we see something different where we might be able to find, and I don't want to call it an exploit, but at this point they have kind of painted us into this corner of having to be executioners with infiltrator's action and invisible infiltrator. And even dazing strike, smoke bomb, and impossible to catch. So yeah, no one's stealing anyone's builds. There's just only one build right now, unfortunately. Hopefully when they do uh, look into the rework, which hopefully it's not years down the road, they've already got their uh, sight set on um, mod 14. So unless they're planning on doing it between mods, we may not see anything till after mod 14. And unfortunately for us console players, that means we're going to have to wait even longer. So, yeah, it, I would probably recommend looking up Lilia Dracon's um, build or Galactic Underwood's build, uh, or even just check out, you know, some of my build videos or watch this one again and look at how I have things set up. I'm going to go back to my other build real quick so you can see it. There really isn't anything different. Like I said, you just want to go through the boons for max damage. Really all it is is a change in these stats. Now of course you'd want to have a higher dex and strength than me, so me, I'll be spending another 1500 Zen to go back after this testing. But there may be hope. It could be maybe a year down the road depending on how they plan things out, but I could honestly see that with gear having higher stats, weapons being higher stats, you're going to hit that threshold where your gear and stuff are, is almost going to fall into place where you're getting your 90% crit chance and then you're just focusing everything into power and or recovery which means that you can forego doing dex and go strength and charisma when that time comes that will be the best option strength and charisma but now with the bonding nerf this is now further out of reach. You are going to have to have dexterity in order to do crits. Because now with the Albear companion nerf, and I want to save this for last, power TR builds, unless you just want to have fun with it, is not going to be the max damage. It actually came close there for a while to be an equal with a crit build. The power builds are now out of the question. So yep, there is only one build. Uh, I'll be trying to put out more videos, like I said uh, in one of my last videos, the holiday season. Don't really have much time to put out videos, uh, especially when 12B arrives. I'm going to be grinding my arse off, trying to get to rank 14s, and I'll keep you up to date through some of that. But um, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. Doesn't bother me. Uh, I know there's only like three content creators for the Trickster Rogue for Neverwinter. And there's only a handful of Neverwinter content rec creators in general. So uh, definitely share. Let's help build the community as much as possible. Because... I mean, even with as many uh, pitfalls as it runs, I run into being a trickster rogue, I still wouldn't pick a different class, and I still have fun playing the game, no matter how much I gripe about it. Um, but at this point, if I had nothing to gripe about, then I could just enjoy the game. But right now, I enjoy the game, and I enjoy griping about it. So if you want to hear more, subscribe. Uh, click the bell notification to hear me more, rant some more or get some news. But... 
Thanks, and I'll see you next time.